Hello everybody, this is Lara with your weekly video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 22nd of April 2022 and I'm recording this week from Troncones in Mexico. I'm on a beach in Mexico getting some surf and we're staying right on the beach and it's, um, well the waves just keep being really big and it's a bit loud so I hope you can hear me clearly enough over the roar of the surf. I can't stop it, there's nothing I can do about it in this accommodation. Prices continuing lower and the picture, the classic technical analysis picture, looks pretty bearish and the main Elliott wave count for a while now has been quite bearish and so it should be unexpected that we're getting downward movement. I'm expecting that will continue and my target for support is 3185.20 to be met in a few weeks. The alternate wave count is bullish, a short term target is 4675. Let's fix that. The short term target for the alternate is 5111. That's been recalculated today. The longer target is at 6743. If we see a new high above 463730, we can have some reasonable confidence in that alternate. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last. The main Elliott wave count, this is it, and it's fairly bearish. It expects that a primary degree second wave correction is going to continue and probably meet the technical definition of a bear market, and that it should, at its end, retrace at least 20% of market value. Primary 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, below 2191.86. Primary 2 looks like it's subdividing as a double zigzag, W, X, Y, and I expect Y could be extended. The first expectation in the first instance would be for primary 2 to reach the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio of primary 1 at 3815.2. If price gets down there and the structure is incomplete or it just keeps on falling then attention turns to the next target. Primary 2 would reach the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of primary 1 at 3195.28. For now that's my preferred target but along the way down I will be paying attention to the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio as well. Double zigzags have a purpose. The second zigzag and the double's purpose is to deepen the correction when the first doesn't move price deep enough. And here, this would be a remarkably brief, shallow primary degree second wave. So this wave count fits the expectation. I will expect therefore intermediate Y to make a new low reasonably below the end of W to achieve its purpose of deepening the correction. The 0.382 and 0.618 Fibonacci ratios would both fit that expectation. Let's take a look at the daily chart now where the high for primary 1 is this point back here. Here's primary 2, A, B, C for intermediate W, the first zigzag and a double. A, B, C, the double is joined by a complete 3 in the opposite direction, subdividing as a zigzag, and labelled intermediate X, and now intermediate Y may have begun with A, B and C to complete the target expectation, that 0.618 ratio, but also the 0.382 ratio, a first possible target. I may need to move the degree of labelling with an intermediate Y down one degree. For now I'm going to label it as A and B complete. It could just be 1 and 2 within A complete though. I'll have to consider that in coming days, weeks. If it makes a difference to the target or the invalidation point I may have to run a different degree of labelling as an alternate but for now it would make no difference to the target nor the invalidation point and so I'll just leave it as labelled minor degree and just let you know that that could change in coming days or weeks. If B is over here and C has begun, C will most likely subdivide as an impulse which will be labelled minute 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Within that impulse, minute 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, above 4512.94. If we move the degree of labelling down here and we label this 1, 2, 3 within minor A, the rule for a second wave correction within the third wave is exactly the same, so the invalidation point is exactly the same. At the daily chart level, if we move the degree of labelling here up one degree and see it as a completed double zigzag, it's still possible that primary 2 could have been over here and primary 3 could have begun. There's lack of strength in upward movement though. If this is the start of a primary degree third wave, I would have expected more strong upward movement and not this downward movement we're getting. But let's consider an alternate. It's important to always try and have an alternate if you can see a reasonable one. 
Primary 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. Intermediate 1 may be incomplete. Intermediate 1 may be subdividing as an impulse, with minor 1 and now minor 2 moving lower as a double zigzag. Minor 3 would reach 1.618 the length of minor 1 at 5 triple 1. Minor 2 may have moved lower on Friday, finding support pretty close to almost exactly at the lower edge of the base channel. I'm just going to quickly pop back to the weekly chart and show you how I draw that base channel on the weekly chart. I draw it from the start of 1 to this low down here and if you extend that out, that's where downward movement found support at the end of Friday's session, pretty close to the lower edge of that channel. If this channel is breached early next week, the probability of this bullish wave count is going to further reduce. Minor 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, below 4116.06. A new low below that price point by any amount at any time frame invalidates this wave count. Elliott Wave works on highs and lows, not open and close. Any amount at any time frame because the rules are absolute. Okay, classic analysis now. How much support for that rather bearish Elliott Wave count is there? Quite a lot. This week completes a strong downward week. Volume is pushing price lower when we compare it to the prior week and there's quite a bearish long upper wick. Price is closed very near lows for the week. Support here about 4260 if that's broken. Look out for next support below about 3980. Bond balance volume is constrained, no signal at the weekly chart level. RSI neutral, ADX telling us there is a downward trend at both time frames. This is quite bearish. Stochastics neutral, but we use RSI when ADX tells us the market is trending. There's plenty of room to go before RSI reaches oversold and ADX reaches extreme. If this is a downward trend, as telling as which is what ADX is telling us, there's quite a long way to go before it gets into a difficult area. Plenty of room below. At the daily chart level, a strong downward session for Friday. Volume overall still fairly heavy, not clear, not stronger than Thursday, but now we've got two 80% down days back to back. This is quite bearish and supports a bearish Elliott Wave count. On balance volume gives us a bearish signal. It's pretty weak though, but a little bit of support for the main Elliott Wave count. ADX tells us there's a downward trend. This is a really strong bearish signal from ADX. It's coming up from low levels. It's now above 15. It's rising and it's below both DX lines. This is the strongest signal ADX can give. This is a strong support for a bearish Elliott Wave count. RSI neutral, but we use uh, sorry, it's not oversold. There's still plenty of room or a reasonable amount of room below to go before this reaches oversold and stochastics entering oversold, but we use RSI, not stochastics, when ADX tells us there's a trend. ATR showing a little increase as price falls, normal behaviour. There's an increase in volatility with this downward movement, so this looks normal. At the weekly chart level this week, the AD line has made a new midterm low price has not by a fairly wide margin. There is stronger fall in breadth in this downward movement. It's well, rather breadth is falling faster than price. We lead, read this as a leading indicator. This is bearish and supports the main bearish Elliott Wave count at the daily chart level. So here's the weekly chart for the AD line. At the daily chart level, both price and the AD line moving strongly lower Thursday and Friday. No bearish divergence here doesn't mean there's a lack of support for the bearish Elliott wave count. We do still have this mid-term bearish divergence back from here to support the main bearish Elliott wave count. When we look at the NASDAQ AD line, there's over 10 months of bearish divergence between price and the NASDAQ AD line at the last all-time high for price for the S&P. This supports the bearish Elliott Wave count. I'm going to bring this into the analysis once a week because the large caps within the S&P 500 are an important component of the S&P 500 and a lot of those are on NASDAQ so this is important to look at once a week. This week price is falling NASDAQ AD line is falling. The NASDAQ AD line has made a new midterm low. The S&P price index has not, or cash index has not. This divergence is added bearish divergence, supporting the main bearish Elliott Wave count. If you want to find some support for a bullish Elliott Wave count, you 
you might find a little bit in inverted VIX. This week, price and inverted VIX have moved lower. No short-term divergence. The last divergence short-term was bullish. You could expect, though, that could have been resolved by a little further upward movement. Maybe, maybe not. Between VIX and VVIX, there's a couple of bullish divergences here, which could be considered support for an alternate bullish Elliott Wave count. For the short term, both of them are moving higher. Volatility of VIX is increasing, along with VIX. As an increase, there is no new divergence here. At the daily chart level, both VIX and inverted VIX have moved lower. There's quite a big cluster of bullish divergence here at the daily chart level to support a bullish Elliott wave count. Likewise, between the last lows between VIX and VVIX, bullish divergence. VIX here, or VVIX, has made a new low. Volatility of VIX is depressed compared to VIX. This is bullish for price for the short term. So there's a little bit of support for a bullish Elliott wave count here. I give, will almost always give VIX and inverted VIX and VVIX less weight than I will breadth though. So there is on balance more support for a bearish Elliott wave count, but I do need to consider that alternate bullish. That's all for me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope all our members are looking forward to a fabulous weekend.